I am back home. I just had about a two hour walk. I was trying to get to the bank to do the currency exchange, but it took um, a long time and I just gave up. I was like, I'm not going to get back in time for classes. But I did indeed have been done when I was out. This is some kind of green thing. I'm not sure what. But it's very tasty. This is a purple thing. Looks like there's some stewed cabbage. And then she fished out a big piece of chicken for me from the pan. And rice. I have to say I'm eating a lot more vegetables in my meals now. He's three minutes. Finish up my lunch here. I also have leftovers. There's some kind of tofu soup. It's kind of spicy, so I'm waiting on that. And I'm going to make a call to the Department of Labor to see if I can indeed get a work permit. That's going to be a bit difficult. The reason is if I want to stay in Taiwan, I have to get a work permit in order to be able to teach English here or do anything here. Unless I get the student visa and learn Chinese for 15 hours a week, which is no problem for me. But the work permit is proving a little difficult because a lot of the places already want you to have a work permit. Since I just arrived, I have no work permit. Also, even though I have the equivalent of an associate's degree from the UK in the interior design diploma, 60 credit hours. The school closed down after I graduated. I had written for 50 years. And that's proving a little difficult for the ARC visa. Also, I'm still not too keen about my job being tied to my visa, to be quite honest. So I'm going to talk to the Department of Labor to see if I could just get a working visa so that I could tutor the students on my own or subcontract out to the cram schools or the other schools. The reason being, if I can be self-employed, my job, I'm not going to fire myself, for example. Now, I really wasn't planning on staying in Taiwan. However, I really like it here so far. Now, I will say, like today, walking on the road was a little hard for me. The main reason is, is I have hearing issues on my left side. Because of that, any loud or sudden noises throw off my hearing. And as I say, there was a lot of loud and sudden noises walking on the road today. So that was a little uncomfortable, to be honest. But I feel very safe in Taiwan. The other factor that I'm considering is if I stay in Taiwan on and off for five years with an ARC visa or something like that, then I could, in theory, have Taiwanese citizenship in addition to U.S. citizenship. This would be a big perk. It's the same in Thailand. So, like, for example, in theory, if I decide to stay in Asia, which I plan on doing, I could be a citizen of both Taiwan and Thailand. Now, I think Thailand might make you revoke your citizenship to other countries, so ergo, that's not going to work, because I have no intention of giving up my American citizenship at this point. So anyway, but because of that, if I could get Taiwanese citizenship, that would give me at least two passports in the next five years, which is a good thing. Also, the cost of living here is so much more reasonable than in the States. It's like this meal that I'm having right now was $3.56 today. And it's a huge meal. My grocery bill was a little more than I was expecting last week because I bought a bunch of stuff because I didn't have anything in my kitchen which made me panic. But the average cost of living here is probably going to be about 
I'd say a third of what I pay in the U.S. Now, the only exception is the apartment is going to still be a little more expensive. However, I just sorted out if I need to, there's a room for rent with a lovely couple from India who has no trouble if I teach English in my room and will give me kitchen privileges. And the rent for that is like less than 300 a month. Also, by renting from people who are expats from India, I know that there won't be um, any problem with the fact that, like, I don't, I eat pork, I don't really eat a lot of seafood. Um, most people from India don't eat a lot of pork. They might eat seafood, but they're not going to think it's weird if I don't. And also, a lot of my friends and relatives actually come from India. So, it feels a little bit more like home. But, I got that sorted. So if need be, when I leave on the January 5th, I could go to that residence. I'm sorry, I haven't eaten and it's really good. Mm. But my plan today is I'm going to call the Department of Labor here after I finish my bid done. I'm then going to teach this afternoon. I have two interviews tomorrow with schools here in Taipei. I do have an acquaintance. It's a very long story. They're very nice people. I'm like, they're so over the top nice. I don't know. That's a little hard for me because most people are not that way, at least where I come from. But they called me yesterday and they were like, Anna, I have found you the perfect apartment. And I'm like, how did you know? I was actually looking at apartments this afternoon and lo and behold, there were none. If I want to have even a hot plate and a washer, I don't really have a lot of, you know, huge expectations for an apartment, but I do want to be able to cook my ramen if I want to and have a kitchen sink and a washer of my own that no one else has been in. I'm like, yes. So anyway, I talked to them yesterday. They've had me a really nice apartment for about $341. It looks like the one in Bad Betty, kind of. Bed, closet, kitchen, hot plate space, TV, everything I need. And it's on the second floor, which is lovely because I do not like stairs. And so also it's near the night market and the other in Taichung City. I'm kind of gearing up mentally because Next week, I plan on going in officially 10 days to Taichung City on the bus, which has me a little freaked, I will be completely honest, because I've never taken public transportation here in Taiwan, and I'm a little worried, like, what happens if I get on the wrong bus? But, you know, I've already thought it through, and I'm like, so you get off the bus, you hail a cab, and you get back to your house. It's not that huge of a deal, Anna. So I'm taking everything in little bits here. But anyway, I'm going to Taichung City next Saturday for a Ray Huan concert. He's performing with a bunch of other people in the park. It's a free concert. And thanks to Johnny for letting me know, my friend here in um, Taiwan. Very nice dude. He looked it up for me because I couldn't find it online. He's like... I will find that for you. It is free, Anna. You don't need to buy the ticket. That's why you can find them online. I'm like, oh, okay. So I'm going to Taishan City next week, next weekend. I can look at the apartment. I could um, go to my concert, stay the night at a very nice hotel for like $30, and then come back the next day. So my total trip would be about, um, give or take, 50 bucks. So that's my plan for next weekend. So I'm kind of gearing up mentally for that little adventure because public transportation it always throws me off. So, but anyway, back to today. Today, calling the labor department, going to see if I can get a visa or work permit just for myself as a self-employed person to teach English, which would make things a whole frickin' lot easier. The other thing I've noticed here in Taiwan, I don't know if it's just in general when you travel overseas, but there appear to be a lot of schools that are trying to hire people illegally to teach English. 
I'm not saying it's bad. I'm not naming any specific schools or people. I'm just saying it seems to be a big problem. And the thing that bugs me about this whole scenario is actually there's three points. I'm a bullet point person. But number one, if you're running a school here in Taiwan, you're charging top dollar to provide people with exemplary education, usually for their children in English. But you don't care enough to legally get your teachers which only costs like a thousand NTD to get a work permit here, which is the equivalent of like 30 US dollars. So that kind of hacks me off personally, because number one, it doesn't seem fair to the parents who are paying top dollar for this education. Number two, it's not fair to the teachers who could be deported at any time or find 130,000 NTD to 300,000 NTD. I think I was reading online yesterday. Now, chances are very unlikely that someone would be fined and deported, but the chance is there, and it just seems very wrong that schools are doing this to people. I mean, no offense, they're not going to be doing it to me because I just said flat out, I ain't doing that. So, I mean, no offense, I'm just one of those people that's like, no, it's not fair to me, it's not fair to the school. If the school gets caught doing that, they're fined and penalized, but that's a big problem at the moment. A lot of schools also want you to already have your work permit, which it's really hard to get the work permit if you don't have a job. So ergo, you've got this little problematic triangle, if that makes sense. So that's kind of where I'm at with the whole work, stay, whatever. I'm not really that concerned because here's the thing. I have a 15 day window to figure this out. After that, it's like I have to leave the country and come back and try again. Which, at that point, I think I'd be kind of doing, I'm going to Thailand, to Phuket, or Chiang Mai, and having a fabulous time and looking at getting a student visa there. But, right now, I'm like, you know, this is my first time abroad. It'd be kind of fun to stay a little longer in Taiwan. I haven't even made it to the Mangrove National Park, which is over there. My legs were really tired after 40 minutes of walking and seeing that I was still 40 minutes away because... Apparently my Google map isn't working properly. So anyway, it would be fun to be able to explore a little more here in Taiwan, improve my Mandarin, because it sucks brick. I mean, I can take you the Nihao, the Bishi, Shisha. That's kind of it. And to be honest, that has been enough to get me around. But... I would like to be able to speak more fluently and instant immersion in a new place really helps because like when I was in America I would never speak in Chinese or even attempt to because I would be nervous here it's like it's either Google Translate or me so to give it a more personal touch I usually use myself but um it's kind of funny because like today when I ordered my meal I, I had to type into Google Translate I was like do you have anything that is beef or chicken and mild in flavor? Because I can't do spicy. And then he's like, da 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 da, holds up the chicken and like, chicken. <laughs> and then she comes over and she's like, she gives me an extra bag of this uh, tofu soup. And I'm like, shisha, shisha, thank you very much. But, um, you know, being able to speak a little more fluently than that, and most people here in Taiwan do speak quite a bit of English, I've noticed, but some do not. And so because of that, it would be helpful to improve my knowledge of Chinese and to stay more in this beautiful place. Because honestly, the, the greenness here, I mean, I haven't been somewhere with this much green in years. It's like you're just on this beautiful island. Now, the other thing is I have people in the States who have messaged me and gone, Anna. China could come and take over Taiwan while you're there. <laughs> I mean, no offense to my American and Canadian friends who have said this at all, but China and Taiwan have been having this little issue for quite a while. I'm not saying that they won't ever have that actually come to a head, as it were, but I sincerely doubt it will be in the next three to six months while I'm here, because this has been going on for like way over 50 years, according to my Taiwanese friends. And the, the projection is that maybe in like 30 years time, there'll be a bit of a, a, an issue. But right now, 
I'm not really that concerned. And the other thing is, I think it mainly has to do with the fact that, you know, the first 30 years of my life had a lot of very, uh, what do you call it, traumatic upheaval in my life. I mean, I lost my folks, I lost Bob. It was, it was a difficult time. And my childhood was not easy in any sense of the word. So I saw a lot of very, very difficult things growing up and being a young adult. And I think because of that, it's like, it's not that I don't worry about certain things. It's not that they don't concern me. But with certain issues, it's like, I have made it this far in one piece and someone or something out there has done a pretty good job of making sure I'm okay. Now, I can't explain why certain people that I know who are relatives are not okay. I'm not going to go there, but I'm just saying for me, it's like I don't have time to worry about the what ifs because quite frankly, there's a way a lot of what ifs that could happen. So I'm just going to take time to enjoy the present, to think about what I can do in the future to make my life better for me and my kids and just let the rest be. So it's not that I don't consider political upheaval and wars and rumors of wars as they say, but it's just I'm sitting there going, what's the point of worrying about everything that could happen when it may never happen, or if it does, it's going to be years in the future. So, that's where I am today. Oh, behind me is my bed. That's my giant tub. I'm not sure why it's in the window. It's a little unsettling. I have to pull the blind to take a bath. But, and there's my non now doll, and bunny, and fox. Yes. I couldn't leave without them. How could I leave without them? I mean, you know, my perfect neck pillow. It's right there. It's like perfect when I'm going to bed. Okay. I almost got everything somewhat put away. I have all my here with my results, my last lab tests, and my Papa Now fragrance sachet from 1000 stars. I still have not. 1,000 stars back. I'm missing that. I'm not sure where it went. That really has me bugged. And I also cannot find a bunch of bracelets that I had brought in a special bag, but I'm sure they're around. But everything else is accounted for. And I'm going to go take a little rest because i got to call the bureau and I've got to take a nap before my next round of classes because with the jet lag, I've been getting up about 1 in the morning, 12 midnight to 1 in the morning, and Last night I just taught a couple classes because I was like, I can't sleep and I don't like just watching YouTube videos. I mean, I enjoy YouTube videos, don't get me wrong. But, I'm like, there's only so many times you can watch YouTube videos and not get bored. So anyway, I have to say my Eclipse playlist is pretty fun. But anyway, so there we go. 